coordinator who's used to calling the plays, how we all work on the field in the meetings, game days. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, obviously, right now we're working through that process from the off season. Um, again, I just keep reiterating, like it's invaluable for me to have him around, and and uh, it's been really collaborative. Again, just uh, having sort of been in similar schemes, but kind of bringing them together. Um, obviously, out there, like I don't know, you guys were out there a little bit today, like just being able to kind of lean on him for me too, like just you know, in between periods, style up to him and, and talk to him about what he saw or some things that I saw or things I'd like to change. So it's it's been. It's been awesome for me to have that uh, resource as as we go through this sort of installation and sort of growth period here. So, um, man, it's been cool. Just again, I, I didn't have a lot of personal history with with D'Amico, so just like building that relationship as we've gone through this, and obviously spending some long hours in the, in the office trying to get up to speed. It's been really cool. So, uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a collaborative process so far. So hopefully, uh, we just kind of keep that going. You've got a chance to uh, you've got a chance to watch Derek Stingley Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I mean, I haven't. And, you know, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't really look at the weight stuff much right now. I mean, a lot of those guys are, you know, heavy, you're fluctuating or working into it. That's part of what this offseason program is. Uh, Sting's been able to do everything we've asked him to do. Um, again, another sort of position where we're playing some different coverages and some different techniques than he played last year. And he's been, he's been good fitting into that stuff. So um, now I'm happy where he is, where he's been working. Oh yeah. Hopefully they keep paying attention. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. So again, we're, we're going to base out of a four down front. Um, and I would just say, if you wanted to like do the whole pick one word, it'd be attack. Um, you know, we play our defensive line, uh, in a penetrating style, um, try to edge them up, play nine techniques, those sort of things to cause disruption. So our goal is to be able to affect plays with our front um, by the the style of they play, the attack mode that they play, and, and penetrate and disruption, and reset the line of scrimmage, and those sort of things. So I would say if you just wanted to like bottle it up, that would be like uh, the main thing. And again, the more that you can pressure a quarterback with four and not have to commit other resources to doing that, that helps kind of protect your coverage a little bit. You know, so you can play multiple coverages and change that element up. You know, if you can affect the 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 quarterback in the offense with your front. So that's kind of the, the general approach and philosophy that I'd say we're taking. Matt, when you were in Arizona, you got the ball with the Baker, it wasn't interchange with Chester. It was mm-hmm. two safeties here. Mm-hmm. I've seen reps whether in college or at the professional level with a nickel, mm-hmm. uh, money back, or free safety, strong safety. Sure. What does that do for you defensively to get certain alignments that play through your game? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to, to uh, you know, I think obviously both those guys, and I would just say in general in the league, you know, I think there's a, a trend towards more multidimensional players because they're going to be put in different spots and because offenses have running backs that can do a lot of different things and tight ends that can flex out and, and do all sorts of stuff. So to have the ability to have some safeties that can uh, match up with those different type of body types or different type of weapons on offense. Um, and then from a, I guess, like a disguise standpoint where we don't have to flip certain guys or match corners over or do some of those things that if, if this progresses that we can kind of keep those guys if we feel comfortable enough with say Jimmy and, and Jalen and guys like that being able to just sort of match up whatever comes to their side that's a that's a, a nice piece for us because we can start just sort of hopefully using our, our, our looks all sort of stay the same we're not giving away certain things by having guys travel so um, you know again those guys are working through everything we're asking them to do it's been been great that's a good room and uh, but yeah that'll be a, hopefully a nice piece for us. Yeah, uh, I don't know, whatever superlative you want. I mean, great. Yeah, no, I'm literally, I'm saying he's great. I mean, he's just, uh, you know, uh, doesn't say much, like, in the in the meeting rooms and stuff from, like, that point of view, but, man, is, like, super uh, communicative on the field. And um, I would just say, you know, he, you know, D'Amico has a team meeting uh, pretty much every morning, kind of recapping some of the stuff that happened uh, from the day before. And I would say Jalen's sort of finishing an effort uh, shows up on that tape probably as much as anybody. I'm not going to discount anybody else, but um, just the way he approaches, like finishing every play in practice, like being in a good football position. You know, again, as a deep safety, sometimes 
runs in practice kind of squirt through. We, we, you know, we want our offensive guys finishing downfield, but Jalen's always there, like getting to a hip, finishing a good position. Like, so just to see him train those habits consistently like that is just really cool. I mean, I think that's what, you know, you guys saw obviously on the field last year of just like the, the fruits of those labors. Like he practices with intent. Um, and he's very deliberate in everything he does, so I think that's what kind of translates. You mentioned that, that Stingley, you mentioned that Stingley has been working through a lot of multiple coverages. Mm-hmm. What about his play allows you to do other things with the rest of the defense? How does he equip you? Yeah, I mean, he's just obviously, uh, I mean, hopefully, he, you know, he's a, a corner that we feel good about in whatever coverage matchups that we get to. Uh, you know, again, whatever that, whether we get to points where we feel good about isolating him or not, like that's obviously stuff down the road that we'll get to right now. We're just kind of playing our base techniques and trying to get him right. So we haven't really got into matching guys or flipping dudes or any of that type of thing. So, you know, hopefully, you know, again, we're just asking Sting to keep progressing and getting better at what we're asking him to do right now. And then I think those types of decisions are more made as we get closer to, to things. Yeah, how much did it up down Oh, yeah. I mean, I think uh, very good. I mean, it's, he's been great in that room, with all, again, with a guy like Jalen, obviously working with him. Oh, it's okay. It's a fine. It's, no, it's okay. I forgive you. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> um, you know, like like I said, like working with Jalen and like kind of helping that growth along the whole the whole back end, it's, it's great. I mean, obviously, you know, just a lot of the guys or some of the guys that we targeted to bring in from Jimmy and – you know, some of the guys in D-line that have a history in the system and familiarity, like it just helps almost like just keep the messaging going, obviously, in the locker room and those sort of things. And Jimmy, Jimmy's been great, and he, lo- he looks like he's about 25 right now out there, so that's been cool too. Last, how, how last two guys. I know it's very, very early in the process. It is. Oh man, that's it. Isn't Bobby coming in here next? Well, I'm saying from well, you're I'll, I'll, I will. I, thank you. I am. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you one story. Honestly, um, we uh, we did a two minute drive at the end um, at the end of practice sometime last week, and uh, he threw into a kind of a coverage we hadn't shown. It was the first day we put the coverage in, and he threw in. Um, kind of pro- probably wasn't a throw. He, he probably wanted back. I'll just say it that way. Um, but the first thing he did when I was walking off the field, he grabbed me. He said, yeah, literally, Coach Burt, and he spent about 10 minutes walking in off the field asking me about the coverage and just sort of what he saw and, and how we, how we kind of set it up and, and talk through that. So I think just, again, his his deliberateness and intent to try to get better, and, like, he's literally grabbing everybody he can in the field. Um, I actually, I love, like, all those guys, Davis and, and Case and those guys, like, I like during stretch lines, I kind of go hang out and talk to them a little bit about some of the stuff we're doing in the periods and just try to get that back and forth. And um, so he, he's been very sort of intentful of, like, intentional of learning and just learning defense too like hey what'd you call there what was that coverage or what'd you do here so uh, i respect that from him Last one for Thanks, Coach. Yep. With, uh, working with Mico, it's, it's new for you guys but mm-hmm. how have you guys how has he organized teaching like organizing what you're going to teach and then bringing it to the players like how in, in the spots that you've been how have you seen how you guys have approached that yeah i would say um man okay uh i would say probably you know He's he's a very like um, sort of like specific to big. So in phase one, um, we actually started phase one with a lot of um, almost individualized. We took every player and said, "Hey, how can this is what you can improve just as an individual, a technique or something in your game that you can improve to work on through this first phase." And then when we got into sort of the second half of that in phase two, it was very much like. Uh, techniques like it was we didn't really even get to the big picture coverage stuff we were like everyone's gonna learn this technique this guy then we're gonna learn this technique we're gonna kind of do these drills and so we went from like very specific to like kind of group settings to now like obviously team settings and putting it all together where like hopefully the foundation of like you're playing this technique in this coverage so it's not necessarily knowing the whole coverage I mean they, they do know the whole coverage but like you've learned it from this technique up essentially so you kind of always have that foundation so he's really good he's uh, it's been cool like he's done a really good job of like wanting to build a foundational aspect to what we do and understand the whys and sort of the intricacies and we had that time coming through phase one and phase two to now it's like all right we're all together we're calling the whole coverage but within it those elements that technique you've practiced since day one and we talked about that technique and you're doing this and here's how it all meshes together so we kind of went from specific to sort of big picture and it's been a cool like process i think for those guys to to go through cool sure guys all right
Yeah, it's really exciting. Really, all the all the rookies in general came into like from the get go with a mindset of they were going to attack this thing. I mean, they've all been uh, mentally in the classroom. They've been getting after it as far as putting the time in. They came to work. They've been buying into what we're telling them to do on the field. Again, it's similar to what Burke had just said when he was talking about the overall philosophy. Like everything we do, really as a football team, starts from minutia and grows up into an offensive side of the ball and then from there into a team and there's a lot of fundamentals and techniques that go along with that at every position so quarterback receiver back all the way across the offense and they've all really came in and attacked it as as a group which is probably one of the coolest things to see with cj is it's not just him alone they're all doing it together um and and he's been awesome he's been putting the work in they've all been coming in for some extra work um, and, and doing stuff on their own when they're away from here. Um, th- they've been doing great. In teaching CJ the offense and even building at first, what came first? Did you have an idea of what you wanted to go with him with? And where did you just talk about that process of building and also teaching him? How do you approach that? Yeah, I think every every player you have before you can, you're can you really empowered to teach or coach them, I think you have to have a vision for what they're going to do and who they are and what's going to make them the best they can be. Um, so you kind of start there and then you branch off into, okay, we need to attack this. This is your strength. Let's make sure we emphasize this. We're, we, we struggle a little at this aspect. Let's try to work on this to get that improved so that the totality of what we do then fits into what the guys around us are doing, which then fits into the offense. So it's, it's kind of been the same for everybody in that regard, CJ included. Yeah, I've been fortunate in that, like you said, I have a lot of connections and people that I'm friends with that I know across the NFL that have been through this process. And I've also been fortunate that I went through it really the last two years um, with Trey and with with Brock in a different way. And just getting like the different ways and the different styles guys play, guys learn, they put things together and the process they have to go through to like get to where you envision them getting to um and the patience that's required when you do that while at the same time like the urgency that's required when you do that it's it's always a balancing act um and being able to bounce ideas off guys or have guys tell you their experiences and what they went through and what to watch out for which may or may not apply to the situation you're going through but it's always beneficial when when you have people around you that you know have been through it Yeah, uh, again, it's going to sound like a broken record, but they, the first thing that jumps off about all these guys is just they come in and, and they're hungry and they come in ready to work. And Tank comes from a very different offense at Houston, very, very productive, efficient, but it's just a different style to what we're really doing here. So th- there's a bit of a learning curve. And, I mean, when he's out on the field, he doesn't blink. I, I don't think anyone's noticed um, how big of a leap it is because he's been on it and, and he's been working. Same thing, he's taking what we're, what we're telling him as far as coaching, uh, as far as what we see in the fundamentals of route running. I mean, he's a pretty natural separator. Um, but to also apply that, okay, well, how's this fit within the offense when I know the quarterback has to look at me at this time? And th- there's a lot that goes into that for him. And, I mean, it's, it's been hitting the ground running for him. I mean, it, it's been not an issue. Yeah, it, it's required that he reaches out to learn more from me. But so that that's happened a lot. Um, but he, you know, he just he wants to have command of what's going on, uh, as as anyone who's in that position should. They want to they want to feel comfortable in what they're doing, what direction they have to go, what answers they have to have on every play, and every play is a little different. Um, and you know, for him being able to tie things back to other experiences that are the same. 
uh, is kind of what we grind through over and over again. And it's really a lot of, again, our offense and our defense as we do the minutia branch out from it. And then at the end of the day, you know, we kind of point back to things we've already talked about and said, hey, this is the same as something else you've already done. And that just helps them hone in on specifics. Yeah, that was that was a little. I was a youngster back then, but I mean the the roots are all there. I've, I've still I remember watching when I first got to offense in San Francisco, all these Houston Texan cutups and Andre and Schaub and you know David Anderson and all these guys just running the same stuff we're running right now. And the the principles and the foundation of what they did is all there. But like everything, you know, it, it kind of evolves as it as it goes. So where it's at right now. The core is all the same, and probably the, the edges have branched off maybe a hair. Like, I mean, the league has just changed. There's some different defenses you see. Um, there's some different issues you get. So you, you find different ways to adjust to that. But, it again, it's cool because it ties back to the previous question. You just point to something else that they did back then and be like, hey, this is the same as that was, but now we're doing it this way. Um, so it, that was really neat when I first got to throw on some Houston Texan film and see all the old, all of them play. Yeah, he's, he's just a professional. All the vets we've kind of brought in have have really helped a lot in bringing their position group along and kind of you know bringing the young guys with them, showing what it's like to, to work, to be a professional as far as what you got to do every day. Uh, <clears throat> mentally, physically, on the field, how you work, how you go about your business. And he's been awesome in that regard. And then, you know, you just you see a guy who knows how to run routes. He's got a big frame. He knows how to catch. He's, he's fully invested in the run game. So um, he's been doing a great job. Coach, it wouldn't, be fair to, uh, it, w- it wouldn't be fair to Coach Burke if I didn't ask you a question about the defensive side of the ball. What have mm-hmm. you seen from those guys as far as looking at Derek Stanley and Jalen Petrie? Yeah, it's, it's hard. You know, their their secondary makes it hard on our receivers. They make it hard on our quarterback. Um, You know, we got to be able to get the ball out on time against these guys. And when we're running routes where we know we can separate because they're not going to give you one, you know, Um, which has been great teaching for our whole crew of quarterbacks as far as knowing where to go with the ball, keeping Petrie in the middle of the field when he's, when he's in the middle of the field, just things of that nature. I mean, they, they really strain you. It's been really fun to watch. And as we keep going through OTAs and it'll build through training camp, how their defensive system evolves. And then all of a sudden it, it, it gets really difficult for us to know what they're doing and where they're going to be. Last one. Yeah, I think every offense in the NFL, you, you want to be solid up front, you know, and, and thankfully we have a group up front that's talented. They have the skill set. They have the mindset. They work. They're invested in what we're doing. Um, so th- they have everything that's needed to be able to perform at, at a level that we want them to perform at so that everyone can kind of work as a unit. You know, the run game uh, is a huge part of kind of this system and, and this offense and how everything ties together. Um, and it's a little different from the guys that have been here and what they've done in the past. And they, they're all in on, on learning the fundamentals of how that works, and, and they're bought in on it. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.